Colorado is, I think, going to become one of the great places of the next decade when it comes to clean technology. Now is commercial. What's next? Marine, aviation. After that, who knows? indicates that it's electric. All of these are electric vehicles exhibited at the auto show in March of 1912. Mrs. Whitehead, who is one of the most popular society matrons, this is a quote from her. Well, if I didn't look all right, it was because of my electric. Indeed, since I have driven my own electric, I haven't thought of nerves. A woman can handle the electric car by herself. It's hard to really put your finger on the role that automobiles played in Colorado. One of the things that's not unique to Colorado, but is typical of the entire West, are the distances. There was a very even playing field early on between gas vehicles and electric vehicles. They had very similar capabilities. Uh, the range of the electric charge was not as different as it became. Gas vehicles eventually won because they could travel further. What happened at the turn of the century was simply the fact that the petroleum molecule is energy dense. It's not about that anymore. I mean, we can rip it all out of the earth and, and have all sorts of untold global geopolitical conflict over the last breaths of the fossil fuel industry, or we can go back to the turn of the century and start again. It is the same, but better. Ian Stonington, I'm a Colorado native. I've been in the clean tech business for about 10 years. UQM has been designing and manufacturing permanent magnet electric motors for propulsion and generation serving uh, all over the world, big commercial vehicles, airplanes. I had no idea they did airplanes. Buses, boats, it's wild. So we're gonna go uh, learn more about them. I see the real impact in commercial, medium duty trucks and vans, city buses. You wanna move as many people as possible in the most efficient way. And so over time, that's gonna change. It's gonna be Jetsons, meets sci-fi in 10 years. So when we started, we really got to know the fleets. We actually sat in the passenger seat of a UPS truck for hours and said, how do they drive? How many miles do they drive? Um, what, do they, what do they really need to get their job done and deliver these packages efficiently? My name is Tim Reeser. I'm CEO and co-founder of Lightning Systems in Loveland, Colorado. We build battery electric vehicle powertrains for commercial trucks and buses. Powertrain means an electric motor, a transmission. The entire dash is digitally run. The entire vehicle is run by a computer. The heart of this system is the cylindrical object in the middle, which you've seen earlier on. This is a UQM motor. So that there are some high voltage power electronics, transistors primarily, controlled by computer. So every time we get a test drive going on in this vehicle, they come out with a huge smile. They always say, I'd, I'd rather have that any day than my diesel truck or my gasoline vehicle. It started with just the Ford Transit you see behind me, and now we've scaled into five different vehicle sizes and platforms today. The fleets are beginning to discover that the total cost of ownership is dramatically better. When you see the big, big bus that VIA runs for CU Boulder. The very first city bus diesel retrofit. Oh, ready for the scrapyard. Taken from the junkyard, basically, and put back in service like a brand new bus. And now it's electric, being powered by the system I showed you on the floor. So it no longer uses $26,000 a year in diesel fuel. In fact, they've put up a big solar array and a lot of the energy for that bus comes off solar. It's not about money anymore. It's 
about actually changing the mindset of the population so that we look at electric vehicles as something that can be the natural choice, the correct choice, not just the boutique choice.